Hey, it's Heather, and welcome to Adventures in Gardening. So at the beginning of every garden season, I've got big dreams, and not just of what I'm going to grow, but what I'm going to do with it, and how I'm gonna preserve it or process it in the end, and how I'm gonna eat it all season long. And, you know, it's funny because last year, um, I put in zucchini rampicante, which is behind me, and when you say it, it must, you must say it with zest, zucchini rampicante, that is the proper way to say it. Um, I put it in as a second thought, because I was going to have a great tomato year and lots of um, string beans to process. I did not know, however, that this would be my biggest crop of the season. <laughs> And, um, and I learned a lot from this plant that um, um, I, as it was growing, I thought to myself, I'm like, you know, it's almost like this plant is outrunning the, um, the squash vine borer and the, um, the squash bugs. And I did a little research over the winter and people are saying that. Uh, and it, I think what happens, and I will be showing you clips of this plant behind me as, as I'm talking but it roots in every few feet, and I mean roots in quickly. Rampicante, very fast. Okay, it's growing very, very fast and it's rooting in. Um, the, the fruits can be eaten when they are young and green, or you can let them mature on the vine and like ripen to like a butternut squash looking thing. Now, I have enough pictures and enough footage to show you the complete cycle here. Um, I, ha I don't even know how many I had last year. I'll, I'll insert the video. But at the end of the season, I was out here scooping up and storing as many as possible. Um, very, very large, and I'm gonna show you how large in just a minute. But um, I stored them in my basement, okay? All except for one. Now, everything in the basement stored perfectly fine until February, and then no more. Okay, I should have used them very, much quicker than I used them. So this year, I've got a plan because there are a ton of them hiding in this, this Jurassic Park looking foliage behind me. Um, so one, I saved the largest one. I saved it and I leaned it against a wall in my sunroom and it stayed there all um, winter and people would comment on it. Well, I still have it. Here we are. I, I picked it last October, and here it is, August. Holy mackerel, wait till you see. Okay, now I wasn't sure if it was going to break when I picked it up. Okay, this is Zucchini Rampicante. This is 46 inches long, about, the t this was the biggest one, but most of them were about, about this size. This is all meat. The seeds are down in here. Okay, um, we are going to uh, take this into the kitchen and see if it's worth eating right now. It's got a few spots on it, um, but if it's worth eating, we're going to put it in the oven. I'm going to show you what I do with it. So, but let's take a look at this plant. So when I tell you that this plant outruns all the bad critters that want to kill, zucchini and cucumbers and all that, it doesn't mean that they're not here because there is some damage right here that is happening. I think this is um, Mexican bean beetle. I've seen um, squash, um, squash bugs in here. It's just, you, I have no idea where this is planted anymore because it roots in all over the place. Rooted in, rooted in. I think there's two two plants here. I'm gonna try to not squish anything. Oh, that, that's not good. But you can see them down in there and over in here. You can see how many fruits there are. It's crazy, it's crazy. This, I, I do have to do supplemental watering here because of the, um, the drought that we're having. But last year, th this plant made it all the way to the water down there. How many feet is that? I don't know. 50? I have no idea. It's far.
So this is my Hugel Cultural Hill that um, I started out. This used to be a very, very steep uh, hill and now it's more like levels. Um, and I started out, I don't know, five, six years ago with big logs and just kept piling sticks and leaves. And so that's what they're planted in. So here I am on the stone stairs here, and this is the one thing that I try to not have this plant do is cross the stairs. Yeah, but the problem is it very quickly, very quickly grabs onto things, but I still need to use these stairs. So, oh yeah, not supposed to do that. So I try to redirect the tips here, go back. Go back, buddy, go back. I need to use the stairs. So the majority of the zucchini that are in this mess of a hill of foliage are going to be, um, I'm gonna let them ripen and turn into winter squash. But every time I need to have zucchini for a recipe, I will come out and find the ones that are green still, that are closest to the path. That's actually a good size. You can see something's been after it here. But yeah, I'll use this as regular zucchini. So let's go inside the kitchen and cut open the one from last year. So I have no idea how, w what shape this zucchini is going to be in. After picking it in October of 2021, and here we are, August of 2022, did I save it on purpose for this moment? No, no I didn't. I kind of forgot about it. I forgot that it was there. I think, if I remember correctly, I'm like, oh, at least I can use that one for more seed, but I had plenty of seed. So. Um, Either A, we're going to be eating it for the next week, or B, I'm going to put it on the compost and just save the seeds. So let's find out. And I'm going to show you the tools that I'm going to use too, because um, whenever I deal with um, any kind of a winter squash with a, a really tough exterior, um, there are two tools that I like to use. I like this peeler right here. Okay, this is a Titan. It is a Titan peeler. And I like this. This was one of those miracle blade that came with the set. You know, you can saw through a can. I still have this one and, and you can actually buy these on Amazon um, singly. I forget what it's called, but it's a good knife for this job. So I'm going to take you down just a little bit more so we can see this massive. I'm surprised it didn't snap. I have to be honest. <laughs> Look at this. My husband's gonna be like, what's for dinner? Well, let me tell you, for the next five nights, <laughs> or maybe not, maybe it's no good. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh, smells good. Looks good. Little soft. Yeah, all right. Okay, this is not soft here. All right, so I'm just gonna peel this. Making sure you can see. One thing I have learned about this and cooking with it, it is it has a lot of um, uh, moisture. So when you're cooking it, you gotta expect that it's gonna take a little bit longer to get to get the moisture out. 
especially if you're roasting it. So this is maybe a fourth and it fills up a bar pan and I'm going to put on some olive oil and some spice. Um, I might go out and pick some rosemary, see what's out there. Um, and then I'm going to roast it in an oven and then we're going to take a look when it's done. But it smells delicious. It smells very fresh. I'm really impressed. So um, we'll check back in a little bit. So I just wanted to correct one thing that I said when I took my tools out to show you what I was going to use to process the, um, the zucchini. I told you that I use them for really tough skins. This zucchini rampicante does not have a tough skin. Not when it's green, not when it is that butternut squash looking um, color. It is still very, uh, very thin skin. So anyway, um, so I seasoned um, with some chopped up rosemary, some um, onion powder, and a lot of salt in a 400 degree oven for um, 35 minutes and the timer's going off, so let's take a look. All right, so it is still sizzling. You can see that it's uh, still cooking. Um, with zucchini rampicante, you're not going to get, um, they're always gonna be on the juicier side. They're, they are blistered, um, but they're still soft. I wouldn't call them mushy. So you can see they, they did, they blistered a little bit on the top. Uh, they, I mean, they roast pretty good, but they're never going to end up being, um, they're not gonna shrink all the way down um, and dry out. You can see they're very, very tender. And it, it's very delicious. And it, so it does remind me a little bit of a butternut squash when I eat it. I will take and um, serve this with rice or as a side dish with meat, but um, it's really yummy. So zucchini rampicante. Uh, it is a fantastic producer for a lot of food. If that's the kind of thing you're looking for, you gotta give it a try. You need to have a lot of space. I have found that I, I definitely have to do supplemental watering. Um, it grows very, very, very fast, and uh, I, I can't think of anything negative to say about it other than it needs the space. So if you have any questions, leave them below. I would love to hear from you and what you think about zucchini rampicante, and if you're going to give it a try. Thumbs up if you enjoy spending time with me, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>